Hey, it's Joe Glines from the Automator, and this video is another extraction from our Intro to Auto Hotkey course, which is a phenomenal course. It's over four hours of learning Auto Hotkey. If you're new to Auto Hotkey, it's a great way to get started. This one is your very first Auto Hotkey script, so mm -hmm. it's a great one. Remember, our courses come with a 200% money back guarantee, so within the first 30 days, if you're not happy with the quality of what you got, ask for your money back, and we pay you double what you paid for it. Most of the videos are between three to five minutes long. This one was, I think, seven minutes long. It was a little bit longer than average, but it was a, one of the first ones, right? So it's really kind of stepping into it and talking through a lot of the things. Um, like the video. If you learned something, it really helps us out. Check out the course. It's a great, solid course that really gets you started using AutoHotKey. AutoHotKey is a phenomenal tool that you really should be get used to using. It saves you time and helps your life. Have a great day. Cheers. In this video, I will show you how to create your first AutoHotKey script. It is really simple, and right now I'm just going to show you how to use Notepad to start with it. The first thing that we're going to go ahead and do is open Notepad, and we are just going to type a command. So right now we're going to go ahead and type the command message box, which, as the name implies, it shows a box that will contain some text in it. And in AutoHotKey V2, whenever you're going to be referring to literal text, that you're going to be uh, displaying or using exactly as it is, you have to surround it with quotation marks. So let's go ahead and type hello world. And we're going to close our quotation marks here. And now I'm going to tell the program to stop after I show that message. So I'm just going to go ahead and add the word return here which after it finishes executing each of the lines on the script, it just stops executing anything else automatically. So before the return keyword, anything that is above that is going to get executed automatically until it finds the return. And then in there, it would either wait for certain types of actions like hotkeys or hot strings, or if it is a GUI to show a GUI, but it will not continue executing automatically unless there is some usage input. That's what the return keyword does. Now that we have that, let's go ahead and save our file. Let's call it hello world.ahk. And that's the most important part. Your auto hotkey scripts should contain the .ahk extension. And usually I make sure that it's saved as UTF-8, which is the default at this point. We just go ahead and save that. Now, as you can see, I have now a file called hello world.ahk on the desktop, which if I double click, something will happen that is a little bit interesting. I get this message saying, hey, how do you want to run this file? The reason for this is because I have both versions of AutoHotKey installed, version one and version two. And I have configured the launcher, which you can see in a, in a different video, to ask me if it doesn't know what to do. But at this point, I'm going to choose version two, and you will see the message box popping up with the words that I actually told it to show. Now, this little box that you saw, is ju it just shows when AutoHotKey cannot determine which version of AutoHotKey you're running. It usually does a pretty good job of figuring it out. But if you want to make sure that it's always executed with a specific version, you can use what is called a directive. Directives always start with the hashtag. And in this case, we're going to use one that is called requires. And at this point, I'm going to tell the script which version of AutoHotKey it should use every time I double click on this. And if it doesn't find it, it would show an error saying, hey, it requires this. So what I'm going to say is AutoHotKey version 2.0 and anything after that. And you have to put the word AutoHotKey there. And then you have to specify which version. The V and the plus signs are optional. So I just have to put what, what is the minimum version that I need. And at this point, if I save my script and double click on it again, it will not ask me. It will just go ahead and pick version two if it finds it in my computer. So now, what happened, the other thing that you might run into very often is if you have a script like this that is running and then you double click on it again, you will get this pop-up saying, hey, an older instance of this script is already running. Do you want to replace it? Yes or no? Now, right now, as this is a very simple script, 
is not that annoying because I just make a few changes and I know that is, everything is running fine. But if you're working with a script that has a lot of hot keys or hot strings or has a hidden GUI or something like that, they always run in the background unless you exit the script. And every time you double click, you will get this box. We can use a different directive to make sure this does not show up. And actually the message shows what the directive is. The directive is single instance. I'm going to replace this one right now. I'm going to say, okay, and let's go ahead and add that to our script, single instance. And that will make it that even if the script is running, like for example, right now it is running, if I double click on it again, it will not ask me about that. It will just go ahead and replace it. So that is how you create scripts. You know, this is very simple. You can use Notepad to do this. But later on, I will explain why I wouldn't use Notepad to create any scripts. Now, the last thing that I'm going to do in this video is show you how you can create comments in our hotkey. So there are two ways you can create a single line comment by using a semicolon and a space. After you do that, anything on to the right of that is a comment. So I could put anything that I want. In this case, this forces only one instance. That's for the single instance. And I can say this, this forces auto hotkey V2, right? And if I want a multi-line comment, this, those two examples were um, single line comments. But if I want multi-lines, I could use the slash star to start a comment. And I could make this shows a message inside a box. And then I could create another line and continue my message, uh, my comment in a new line. So I could say, and it has an OK button. And then I can close my multi-line comment by using the star slash. So I open on one side, close on the other, and now all of that is commented out. Now comments are really useful because they do not get executed at all. So you could add whatever you want in there just to remind yourself of some things that you have done or to explain a few things why you're thinking in a specific way. But that way, everything else will run exactly the same as before, but those comments are there. And if you need some other guidance or you're making some changes as you, and you wanted to know how things were you know, working, you could have some comments there that would remind yourself of what you were doing at that time.